Today, we're disgusting. We are disgusting today. <laughs> today, we are discussing pasture management. Let's get into it. Defense is on, just be careful. Yeah, oh, look at you! <laughs> you came up to me! <laughs> Yay! Turn it off now. Oh. What? Look what's there. Oh, yep. Just a baby plant, so. We may have gotten it. You're all asking, what is she pointing to? Welcome back to the Renewed Homestead, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm Denise. And today we are talking about pasture management. Yes, and pasture management, a big part of it is getting animals. And as you can see, we have our sheep here behind us. They are doing really well, and they've done an amazing job for us. But managing a pasture isn't just about animals. There's a lot that goes into it, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're having to do uh, to protect our pasture, um, to make sure that it is going to be viable um, for sheep, for cows, for other animals, that we're not getting invasive species in here that animals, that the animals won't eat and that will just take over our pasture. So there's a lot to it. So we wanted to bring you along and show you kind of what we're doing, um, what we'll probably end up continuing to do, um, and then kind of what our plan is uh, going forward. Yeah, so you know, as you've seen pictures when we first got here, this was all well over seven feet tall. And we, you know, our wonderful neighbor, neighbor Travis, came in, brush hogged it for us, got it down so we could start actually seeing what we had yes. available to us. And since then, we've been working on the perimeter fence. And obviously, we got the sheep, and they're inside their fence. And that gets moved about every two to three days as they eat the grass down and We've talked about that, you know, you don't want them to eat it completely down to the ground because mm -hmm. then, you know, then they're eating around their poop and, you know, that can lead to parasites and worms, etc. And the grass but doesn't recover. The grass doesn't recover as fast. And mm -hmm. you can see, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're below freezing today and we still have some green grass out here. We're not going to have to feed hay for a little while, depending on what what the weather decides to do. But. Yeah, cold day. We, uh, we, I think our high was 26. Yeah, it was about that, our yeah. Our low was 12, yeah. so. I know for those of you in the north, that's probably a spring, but <laughs> for us, it's, yeah. it's cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> family in the south going, ooh, that is too cold. But, yeah, we do get yeah. cold days up here, though. That's why we have a wood stove. That's right, that's right. Well, I spent most of my day inside working the nine to five, so that, that's yes. all right, that's fine. Pays the bills. So anyway, so these, the sheep will get We'll keep moving them around, but it's interesting. We have neighbors up the road that have sheep, and um, we've noticed both the... Barbados, right? I believe it's well, Barbados. I'm not sure. Well, they have sheep. I actually think they're Katahdins as well. But then there's also the other neighbors that have cows out on their pasture. They're not running those in any paddocks. So that whole area, I mean, even though they don't have a lot of animals, is just eaten down to the ground, and it's it's... It doesn't seem possible that having, you know, okay, your animals have this section to eat today. You're moving them on to the next one after two days. It doesn't seem like it would make any difference because, you know, they're going to eat just as much and they're going to eat in the same area. But it's amazing how, I mean, almost decimated that land is over there. I mean, it's yeah. it, the grass is just down to almost bare dirt. And by simply rotating them through, I mean, I won't say that moving this fence is simple. It's uh, time-consuming, but once we have our paddocks up, it's a matter of opening the gate, sending them on to the next green area, mm -hmm. closing the gate behind them, and letting that grass recover. Now that it's been nibbled down and fertilized, and... Yeah, and yeah. I apologize, I thought you were talking about Travis's dad's sheep. Our neighbor... Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. our neighbor's dad raises Barbados, which is different. Yeah. They're a hair sheep, but they're... Uh, you're talking about the ones up the way. Yes, yeah. Up, yeah. Down, down towards the highway. There's ones we drive by and they've got a couple of livestock guardian dogs out there. Very cute. And yeah. And just for frame of reference, our upper pasture here is what, 14, 12 acres, 12 to 14? 
Yeah, I think we, we estimated just, just shy of 14 acres. Yeah, so, and the, the areas that we're talking about are actually, uh, they have more acreage than we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they have, I think the one has eight, eight to ten sheep. Up there? Yeah, yeah. I'd say about that. And then the other has, what, about nine or ten cows? I don't know. There, theirs goes way up over the hill, but they're, you know, the cows yeah. that they have, it's just for that many cows and that much land, you would think that there would be tall grass everywhere, but it, there just isn't. So yeah, we still have a plethora of grass down, and we're into January. We just had a couple of uh, big storms come through. Like I said, it's really, really cold today. We still have green grass. We still don't have to feed hay, and we're looking at the other. Um, properties that have sheep and, and cows and that don't that don't rotate their sheep they yeah. just leave them out and it, like ben yeah. said it is decimated the grass yeah. is like there's no grass they, they've been feeding hay for a month easy easy Easily and a it's month. a muddy mess yep it's a muddy mess so it just shows you you know like you said it kind of defies logic you would think okay well they'll nibble a little here and then they'll go off and nibble there no they decimate it so by moving them we're able to help the grass recover faster um, as Ben talked about we don't have to deal with the parasites the parasite issues that others do and thankfully we um, have not had any issues with parasites whatsoever the sheep that we bought in April which all but two of these are part of that sheep we have the two babies um, and they were commercially wormed for a while and they were actually on grain they weren't on grass and we wondered if we were going to have issues. And that was one of the things when I talked to the gentleman before sold them, I said, have they been commercially wormed? And he said, yes, he did use chemical dewormers on them. Um, Tilly had just been wormed because she was pregnant, but the others he had not wormed in about six months. We're like, okay, please don't. Cause as we've talked about before, we don't want that chemical in the soil hurting the worms and other um, biology that are in the soil that are helping our soil. And so we were wondering, how are they going to do? So we make sure they're fed minerals. We do have a natural dewormer. And on that note, just side note, um, Zach from an American Homestead just did a video on um, a parasite treatment for a livestock. Um, I definitely recommend you go look at it. We're going to try it if we ever have the issue, uh, but really great video. So thanks He's Zach for posting black, that. Blackberry root. Yeah, right? blackberry root. Yeah, and it goes into how, how to do it. We have not had that issue here now. Um, an American homestead, I don't believe rotates the sheep. I believe they are kept in a pen. So he will probably have more parasite issues than we will just because we are able to rotate. But that really takes care of it. And by rotating, you spread that poop around the pasture. Mm -hmm. So it helps to fertilize it. And we're collecting it too for down on the garden. Which, yes. Yep. Which as a warning to people, there's supposed to be a fertilizer shortage coming up later this spring. So stock up now i guess yeah greg judy was doing a video on that recently uh, just talking about how he doesn't have to use the commercial fertilizer because he does the rotational grazing yeah so we've got so. buckets of sheep poop hey isn't that exciting <laughs> <laughs> it works oh it yes works. it does it does yeah but and let's it, and, and it's free really it's free yeah so let's take you down to show you a couple of other areas that we have had to get rid of some invasive species and when we say invasive, we're talking very invasive. Yeah, it's it's that some of it's that nasty rose bush, and you can see from my boots, it just it shreds everything. Yeah, hands included. Yeah, but um, let's go take you down um, and show you a couple of other areas that we are trying to manage, um, and go from there. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, babies. Bye, Me. babies. Me. I know defense is on, so you gotta be careful, sweetheart. Okay. Oh, my sweetheart. I don't have any treats. I already gave you your treats. I gave you your treats, right, baby? Oh, I know. You guys are so good. Bye, sweet babies. And you by the way, when you join the uh, Arbor Day Foundation, every order, they'll send you a free tree, and it's usually a red maple. That's one of them right there. And then I transplanted some, uh, some raspberry bush or something right here with it. So. It'll be pretty. We'll have red maple with the pine trees in the background. Yeah, we are we are planting. We obviously this will be kept pasture. We're doing everything we can to protect it and keep it pasture. But we do want to put some trees in because there's not a lot of trees here. Yeah. Just to give the animals a place to you know to protect them um, to get out from under the weather. Uh, but also it produces uh, there are like chestnut trees and other things that will produce food for us. Yep.
And what you're looking at here is the rose bush. And you can see all around how the sheep had just been through here and eaten the grass down, but they totally ignored that rose bush. And that is also why we are hoping to get our cows soon because we understand they will eat this nasty stuff. All right, so as you can see, we've got this lovely pile of rose bush that Denise spent the better part of, what, two days? Yeah. Cutting this away from the trees, the few trees that we have out here in the pasture. Uh, it was growing up and it was almost seemed like it was choking out the trees. Yeah, but bad, nasty stuff. We're gonna, we'll leave this for the winter in case any little, little critters wanna hide in there and yeah, over winter, but this will probably be burned in the spring, get it, get it gone. Yeah, and this stuff, the as Ben showed you his boots, the thorns on this are awful. Yeah. This is some nasty, nasty stuff, and it's growing up through quite a bit of our pasture, and thankfully we've been able to get control of some of it, but it's, yeah, it's that stuff spreads like crazy. And this is multiflora rose that they brought in. I believe it's native to Asia. They brought it in for erosion control and for fencing, um, you know, it's supposed to be a natural fencing for livestock. And unfortunately, as what happens when you bring in species from outside the area, it went crazy and has just spread and become a massive nuisance. Yeah. And you can, you can't, you can't see it, but they've got, it produces these little rose hips, which I guess are high in vitamin C. You can eat them, but the birds also like them and you will find on power lines, the birds, you'll find a whole lot of this underneath because the birds eat it poop it out and it takes root. So you got a whole row of the stuff through the middle of your pasture or wherever the, the, the phone lines run, but they're not phone lines, but power lines. But that's, that's one of the things we're contending with. And then we've recently identified and started torching. Uh, Japanese bristle grass. Japanese bristle grass. Kind of looks like a cattail for anybody who's never dealt with cattails, but it's a much taller weed. Yeah, and B Billy's talked a lot about Chinese silver grass, and this does look a little different, but it's similar. I don't believe it's as invasive, but it's still pretty invasive, and we have started to find it on our pasture. So we are burning, cutting, pulling out anytime we find it. Um, and apparently there was, um, there was an individual in our hauler that several years ago had planted it, and our, one of our neighbors had gone up and said, hey, <laughs> I've heard this stuff, you know, can get out of control. Why don't you let me pull it out? No, no, no. I like it. It kept it there. And from there, it's, it has started the spreading. The seeds blow. The birds carry the seeds. It's Yeah. And, it, yeah. and I'll sh we'll show you pictures. The seeds on this, there's a, there are millions yeah. of seeds on one plant. Oh, yeah. So it starts to spread. And we do not want that taking over the pasture. The bad thing about it, um, nothing eats it. Cows don't eat it, sheep don't eat it. Uh, my understanding is goats don't even eat it. So there's really no purpose to it other than putting it on the bank, I guess, for erosion control. But there are far better plants that oh, are yeah. far less invasive. That are native. That are native that we will be able to use for that along um, the creek beds. Well like, well, like the silver grass, you know, Billy, the only thing they've been able to do is use pigs to yeah. root it out. You know. Yeah, and it, d it will not grow in the forest. So, uh, you know, if you plant trees, it'll shade it out. But, yeah. you know, we don't, we do not want it to take hold. So we are at war <laughs> yes. with that plant yes. um, to pull it out um, of the pasture. Right. But should we show them here what it looks like now that the sheep been, have been through? Sure. So, and you can see this, this area, the sheep were through here probably, I don't know, what, two weeks, three weeks ago? Yeah, about that. But let me take you down closer in here. And you can see there's green grass coming up through. So as I, I'm going to pan back a little bit here. And you can see the, the grass has been eaten down. It's still there, though, which is great because right now we're getting into the wet season. That will help absorb the water and, you know, in the spring, hopefully we'll have great grass. But you can see over where Loki's running around. You can see how tall the, uh, yeah, not so much there. But that's the, that's the taller area where they have not been through. And we'll bring them back through there to turn it into this nice, nicely groomed pasture area. And 
Yeah, you really can't see it, but I've got some of the fence posts up. That there's a little access road along there, and that's where the edge of the uh, the uh, fence line will be for the sheep. And as Greg Judy says, you have to keep the animals on your land. Yeah. So yeah, we're doing we're doing three strands of electric wire. That should that should keep them in. Yeah. So, but that's also another part of pasture management is making sure that your animals are protected, that they are safe. Yep along with taking care of the invasive species. And let's go take them down to where we found a whole bunch of that Japanese bristle grass. Okay, leaving the nasty pile here. There's water down in there, you can't tell it, but those are the old uh, split rail posts that had old, really old rusty barbed wire on it. We're taking that out, putting in new T posts along yeah see the creek runs down in here over on this side so this little strip of uh, land is ours but this is the access road to the property above us and you see fence post looks much cleaner than what it used to and it will get the uh, the sheep and the cows closer to this edge so we won't have to do so much maintenance in the summer when it's growing up. But let me show you here real quick some of the uh, barbed wire that I've rolled up. You can see it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty rusty and it was really broken up. I was thinking that I might try to repair it as a secondary boundary, but it's just not repairable. All right, so right here, we actually found a whole bunch of Japanese bristle grass and it came up pretty quick and we burned it. There are a couple seeds that we missed. This one's pretty torched, but we're gonna come back and torch it again. Here's, here's some right here. Yeah. We can, I don't know if you can see that, but these fuzzy things, those are all seeds. So we're trying to, trying to destroy those. Yeah, we got a lot of them out. There are still some seeds, so we'll come back. Now that we've now that it's wet, we can burn again. Um, obviously, we had a really dry year, so we want to make sure that we're that we're burning all of this safely. Yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't need this all going up, especially no. with the sheep here and yeah, forest yeah. behind us. Yes, our neighbors wouldn't be happy. Yeah, so when we found this, um, we, you know, we go up, check on the sheep, obviously a couple of times a day, um, visit with the sheep and started seeing these little fuzzy things. I know you saw it first in the upper pasture, right? A little yeah, further up. Some than, of it, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what it was and Just, I ignored yeah. it. <laughs> well, we weren't sure. And then we realized, oh, wait a minute, that looks like it might be. Oh, that. I think yes. that was actually silver grass. Yeah. Yeah. So that, That's different than this stuff. But yeah, as soon as I saw those heads, it. It was kind of weird from down below. It looked like there was another sheep sitting up there. I'm like, he's out of his pen. I'm like, no, that isn't. So I got to cut those heads off and burn them immediately. So we do not want the silver grass getting hold either. No. And so this whole area came up with the bristle grass and we'll show you some pictures. We torched it um, and then we pulled it up by its roots. And then there, as I said, um, as we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a little, some of the seed heads come back up. So we're just going to come back up and retorch it. Um, but we just don't want it taking hold. So part of pasture management isn't isn't just animals that's a huge part of it obviously to heal the land you have to have the ruminant animals um, and we've talked about that before but it's also about making sure you don't let invasive species take hold um, that you're managing it that you're keeping your animals in um, you're protecting your animals so there's there's quite a bit that goes into it oh, there is and and by keeping the grass the grasses growing and managed it also helps your water retention. Mm -hmm. If we get, if we let the animals eat this down this slope, we would probably wind up with a mudslide right down in our kitchen door. I mean, it's pretty much straight on down. So we definitely need to make sure that water gets, you know, retained. And I mean, there is slope, so the water is sloped off, but you know, why, why let it run down? You know, re retain anything you can there. You know, store that store that energy as it's uh, given to you. Yeah, and that's part of um, rotational grazing and healing the land is more water will stay on your property, which is just a huge advantage. Um, you know, we just wanted to take you along. There's still a lot that we're learning. Um, yeah. One of our really creative and intelligent subscribers had talked about trying to, to do a test uh, to kind of measure the soil now and then try to measure it in a few years. So we're looking into 
and seeing how that's done, seeing how expensive it would be. Uh, we are hoping to take Greg Judy's um, uh, class, uh, his grazing school, yeah. um, coming up in the spring as long as the house is done and we've got the fencing up. Uh, we should be able to do that um, just to learn more. There's obviously a lot that we're still learning. Yeah. Um, there's a lot we have to learn. That These are just a few things that we are doing now to kind of manage the pasture. Um, and hopefully everything that we're doing pays off. I know we've already seen huge dividends in just a year. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, I mean look, look at the sheep. We're not feeding them anything. They're just happy and... <laughs> yeah, they get a little sweet feed. They do get a little sweet feed as a oh, treat, yeah. you yeah, know. That's... I, I tend to spoil them. <laughs> yeah. So. She doesn't spoil any animals, does she, Loki? <laughs> yeah. And the chickens, except for Mean Rooster. He's going. Yes. Very soon. He's, I, I told him I don't care if he goes in the crock pot, it's time for him to go to the compost pile or the food forest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but the, uh, as, you know, talking about, you know, measuring the soil now, because setting a benchmark now, it, it's a great idea. We really like it. We need to figure out how we can do that because this really has been neglected for a good 20 years. They uh, used to grow tobacco out here, but the more I'm understanding it is it was all done in greenhouses. So it wasn't just out here. So I'm, I imagine that this really hasn't been utilized since this holler was a dairy farm at one time and they just had cows going all over the place and I really don't think it's anybody's done anything with it since then. I think that was before the 60s, wasn't yeah, it? It probably was. So yeah. I, I really think this, is, this has just been left and probably brush hogged once or twice a year and so nothing's been done with the soil so it would be a really good starting point benchmark so we can see you know five years from now ten years from now how is our how is our soil progressing is yeah and our extension office has said well you can do soil testing you know to see what's in it but we're looking for something you know like the kind of the depth of the soil the health of the soil so we're looking for more in depth yeah. so i have sent off to uh the university of north carolina so hopefully we'll hear something from them okay. um you know just to see if they have any ideas i would assume the university would Department of Agriculture would have. I think so. An there's idea. A, there's a lot of a lot of agricultural schools out here, so hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll get some help with that. But. Yeah. Oh, let's see. What else? The sun is down. And it's getting colder. Yes, yes, and I, we've got to get get ready to get the birds in. Yep. And we came through here yesterday. Some deer went hopping through. We'll probably throw some of that footage in there. But just want to, you know, bring you along with us, show you what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, as we learn, as we make mistakes, as we learn from those mistakes, we'll bring you along for that as well. That's right. That's right. I mean, everybody loves animals, but, you know, people tune into homesteading channels because they want to learn this kind of thing. And that's what we used to do. So yeah, we'll no, share what we know. Yeah. And one mistake we made, you know, we saw the, the Japanese bristle grass. She uh, had planted it along uh, the front of the house at, at the creek. There are... I believe six plants, three of them are up now. Um, we're in the process of pulling this up now that we know what they are. Yeah. But, uh, you, you know, we, we just thought they were a fountain grass. Yeah. We didn't realize it. So when we did find out, we pulled them out, but they've been there for over a year. And that was a mistake we made because we didn't know what the plant was. Yeah. So once we found out, now we're like, okay, we cut all the seed heads off. Now we're pulling those up. Um, those would have been a little harder to burn um, just where they're at. Uh, but yeah, but so now we're, we're pulling this out. We're going to make sure those plants are completely gone. Um, so they cannot spread and that will, will control them. But you know, that was a huge mistake we made not understanding what that was. We just thought it was fountain grass. Yeah. Well, in Arizona it is. I mean, you, you pay good money for that to have, you know, those <laughs> ornamental pretty grasses in your, in your yard out there. And out here we're like, well, we'll just leave it. And yeah. Found oops. out. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yes. Well, we'll find alternatives. So now we got to find something that's slightly shade tolerant because it's kind of under the maple tree. So yeah, grape, we'll find one. Grapes or we'll find a good perm maybe. We'll find a good permaculture plant. That's right. Oh. So. Okay. Loki, are you done? He wants us to throw his rope. <laughs> there we go. All right. Anything else? I think we're good. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in. Please comment. You know, we want to know your thoughts, really. We, we really do. It helps us produce better videos and more interesting videos that way. So Yeah, let but, us know if there's any topic that you'd like us to cover. Yeah. But uh, anyway, make sure you're subscribed. People are getting unsubscribed to other channels. I don't know that we're big enough yet. We're almost we, at 600. We have, no, we have had a few unsubscribed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah we have. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. 
We're at almost 600, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And hit the notification bell so yeah. you'll be alerted yes, when we have a new video out. Yeah, absolutely. So, but be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Get those pets spayed and neutered. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye, everybody. Thank you all. We appreciate you. Bye. Thank you.